Hello, welcome back to Velo Sushi Life Noding. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you um, this geometry nodes uh, setup that allows you to create this kind of effects. So this is actually really classic example. Um, you have seen this like hundred times. It's just like a a bunch of box kind of moving in a wave, and you might kind of already guess. Okay, this is just you know like texture being applied into displacement into mesh and then you're turning the mesh into instance of boxes right so that's uh that's really what it is uh, it's actually really super basic and in the past you have been using uh, something like uh, dupli third or dupli in blender dupli is like instancing the way of you you are doing instancing in the past you can also use particles of course but let me just like reiterate uh, once again for beginners uh, blender artists so this is how we do it in the past this is the new way of doing it using just geometry nodes it's just a little bit technical in the past you start with a single plane and then you do, you're doing like subdivisions and then you're create displays and then you're displacing the plane using a texture so this is displacement I'm assigning a texture I haven't uh, gone to texture yet now I go inside the texture and create texture like maybe noise or cloud so with cloud texture okay now it's, I start to get some kind of displacement and I can adjust the strength the direction can be using the normal XYZ um, yeah a lot of options there with displacement and we sometimes want to assign the coordinates of the UV into an object like an empty so we can control the displacement alright so that makes sense um, now if you want to do like instancing in the past we just parent an object and then turn on the dupli verb but because um, in the newer blender we have geometry nodes we can simply assign geometry nodes right and just like a instance point instance using a basic default cube so now we have this kind of effect, just a bunch of cube animating ups and down. Okay. So what's going on here? Why, why am I trying to explain something that's already pretty clear? Um, that's because um, I want to explain what's happening inside geometry nodes if, if you want to do the same effect. So because geometry nodes itself is a modifier um, in this case, we use the subdivisions and then displace modifier. Displace modifier is something that's eventually maybe goes inside geometry nodes. I don't know about that, but for now, uh, we have it as a modifier. And then with this geometry nodes, we just do the instancing. With this guy, however, I only have geometry nodes. I don't have subdivisions and I don't have displacement nodes. Oh, I don't have displacement modifier so this is the the most basic setup that I could think of so I have sub uh, we already have subdivisions nodes inside geometry nodes so there is this subdivision smooth uh, of which you can control the boundary this one is pretty pretty cool also but for now just leave it like this so we have subdivision smooth and we have also uh, we don't have displacements nodes so we have to recreate it ourselves inside geometry nodes so instancing is the same but what's going on here is like slightly confusing at first you have probably seen it in a different video tutorials but I, I'm just gonna explain it on my way using my own way so we simply need to use a uh, attribute sample texture. Okay, this is 
the one that's doing the job. So by default, of course, our mesh, our plane already have UV map. We assume it has UV map because without UV map, it might not work. So UV map data is being used here and we are resampling it and also we are resampling based on a texture. So there is a texture here. This is a cloud texture and we are mapping it using the UV map and then I assign it into an attribute called blah. Okay. While the UV map itself, <clears throat> I already have this offset and multiplier that's being controlled by an empty. Okay. So, yeah, this is just to control the scaling and also the offset. I don't have the rotations assigned, but that's okay. So with this value, we can control actually something like uh, like the scale of the cube, if you want to. We can mix uh, the scale if uh, if we want. What's, what's happening here, however, is uh, I'm actually trying to mix the position, just the Z position of the original points with uh, this value, blah. So what I did is separating the position XYZ and blah XYZ. So blah is something that we want to assign just to the Z axis. Okay. So in the future, a, a better way is to use actually to use vertex normal and multiply the vertex normal and it's become the new position of the of the mesh for instancing. So for now it's a it's pretty much like this. We can we can actually uh, use another attribute combine and combine the blah let's say we have a, a value here and we want to bring in blah z and then combine the result as scale. Let's see if this is working. Okay, in this case, doesn't seem to like it. Let's try attribute mix instead. Okay, we don't have scale attribute yet. That's why it's complaining. If we do this beforehand, we can control the scaling of each instance boxes. If we do it, if we mix it with blah now and replace the scale, now we have control over the scaling using blah XYZ. Okay, slightly confusing there, but uh, just bear with me. It's, uh, the blah itself just is just an attribute with values. We can perhaps uh, multiply it. Yeah, so this is probably better. Now we can control all these cubes, instance of cubes, and animate it. If I'm not wrong, this is also something that's bakeable. If you, for now, the, the easiest to bake is to use Alembic. So file, export as Alembic. And then if you bring it in, it's gonna use the Alembic import modifier, however. It's not using like real uh, animated curve. But that's uh, something that I want to explain maybe in another video tutorial. Um, so yeah, that's how you animate, how you create like a bunch of cube animating like a wave using the noise texture. Uh, why are we doing it this way? Because at any time in point, we can actually 
use like a like a like a proper like a, something that's even more technical is to use a sine wave. So instead of using the noise texture, we are using a sine wave and a frame, a time frame value inside this. If you want to do that, that's slightly like deeper in in terms of technical um, levels, but uh, you have more control. It's kind of like it's kind of like this. You start in the past. You, if you want to animate a lot of cubes going ups and down, you might actually figure out that you can just keyframe. You can add a single keyframe to the Z axis, right? And you go to the graph editor, and you 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 might figure out there's actually a modifier inside this, and you can assign like a built-in functions, and suddenly you have a like a wave. If you man if you manage to figure this out and also kind of understand what's going on, then that's actually a really good thing. So this is a sine wave assigned into this cube as a built-in, as a modifier of F curve in Blender. So this is actually quite advanced in terms of uh, technical. And you can also assign something like noise. So you can have like a sine wave and noise. This is really similar to what's going on with the texture, of course. And if you do make like a duplicates, and then you offset, you offset the sine wave. So now they have like a, they slightly offset, so they have different wave. So the technical things that's going on here, with the attributes and value properties controlling the wave. This is something that you can apply using geometry nodes per point basis. Okay. So using texture is actually kind of like a, a quick way to do this uh, wave thing. Underneath is really a lot of sine wave and math and formula. And of course, you can do the same thing using something like animation nodes or Photoshop nodes, they're all very similar. Okay, so yeah, if you want to get technical, this is this is really the basis. But we are using texture because it's easier to see and we can control the scaling of the texture and then we can just replace the texture and then so anything that's darker or uh, lighter in term of color will disturb the points and control our cube's position. So this is really the gist of you know, just this is like the, the classic classic example like I said. So once you understand how black and white value or grayscale value can control the positions and can displace points and then you can instant points and then control the scaling using that that those values then you understand it it's it makes more sense all right so there you go that's uh pretty much how i understand this thing hopefully you find this useful thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time thank you bye